digital media, you really are going to be using Canva quite a lot. And we will discuss that today as well. So nine steps to social media success. Please grab a pen and a piece of paper or use your notes if that's preferable to you. Because we're going to be talking and getting you very clear on who you are because confused customers do not buy from confused business people. They get completely turned off. If you don't know what you're doing, they won't feel comfortable buying from you. They will, they will feel, you know, they'll start feeling very uncomfortable. And then who are your customers and where are they? You don't need to be on every single social media platform. You just need to be where your customers are. And where are they? So let's find out where they are. So you don't need to go hunting for them. Let's find out. And this is very broad, but this is, it gives you a bit of an idea about where they are. And then how to set your profiles up properly so that it's very, very easy for your customers to buy your products or go to your service. Very, very easy for them. We need to make that customer journey smooth and easy. And then where to find your content. People, you know, they sit down and they say, well, what do I actually say on social media? And then where to, how to make your content, how to schedule your content, repurpose your content and analyse your content. Now, I can do hours and hours on each one of these separately. And this is why I said right at the beginning, I don't want you to get overwhelmed. I want you to take this as a very, very broad you know, bird's eye view of what you need to do and then just focus on the little steps, little, little steps, you know, to, to grow up that, to um, climb that mountain. So keep it simple. Just try to keep it as simple as possible. Start where you're at and do what you need to do. So if you haven't met me before, I'm Victoria. I've been teaching this for a number of years and I also practice what I preach. So I have been a small business owner for the past probably 14 years now. I've owned bricks and mortar stores. I've owned um, yoga studios, bookshops, um, fair trade gift shop, um, wellness centers. I've had or a wellness center, I should say. I've had multiple e-commerce stores. I have set up multiple e-commerce stores for other people as well. Um, I sell, I make my own products um, and have been doing for a number of years and selling them on Amazon in the US. And like I said previously, right at the beginning, I have just launched a skincare company in January and um, my business partner and I are selling that in Australia and New Zealand, moving into the US. And by the end of the year, I'm hoping on moving into Singapore and Japan. So I'm also a Shopify and Facebook partner. I've got my Bachelor of Teaching, which is why I love coming in and teaching you guys. So thank you for giving me this opportunity to do that and uh, cert for a small business. I'm a board member of the Chamber of Commerce. I'm very, very passionate about helping small businesses. But most of all, I'm a mum to two teenagers and my youngest is about to get his braces today. So it's a bit nerve, a little bit nervous tension in the house today. Okay, so who are you? Write this down. Please write this down. Who are you and what is your business? We need to get so clear on this. We need to get so clear on this that if I'm having a, a coffee with a girlfriend or, you know, a friend, whoever, um, at, at a coffee shop and I know that they need something and you walk into that coffee shop, I want to be able to say to my friend, hey, Joe Blogs over there um, sells this. That's what you need straight away. And the only reason I know that is because Joe Blogs has made that very clear to me about what they sell or, or their product or their service. That's how simple your marketing needs to be. And it's actually quite tricky sometimes to make it that simple. But we need to make it that simple so that we can give our customers the opportunity to spread our business through their word of mouth. That's where the word of mouth marketing is going to be absolutely brilliant for you. But it's our job to um, take that step back and, and clarify that in my, our minds so that it's very clear in their minds. So who are you and what is your business? We need to be clear about how we're going to portray ourselves online. 
if you've got a vegan company, don't post on Facebook munching on a lamb chop at your friend's barbecue. Just don't do it. Just, just don't even post it. <laughs> you know, have, have yourself munching on some halloumi or something like that. So you've got to really think about your branding um, and, and think about who you want to be and what you want to portray online. Let me give, give you a little tip though. It's a lot easier to be your normal personality online because at the moment, video is working better than anything else on, any, on social media because everybody's competing with TikTok. And it's preferable that you get your face in front of that video and you explain your business in your voice. Now, if you need to put on a personality every single time that you're going to video yourself, it's exhausting. It is preferable that you have some form of alignment with your normal personality so that you can not expend so much energy pretending somebody that you are somebody else online. People are going to like you for you and they're going to buy because of you. So we don't actually need to, you know, pretend that we're someone else because it, we can't continue that in the long run. So thinking very carefully about your product and service, and you might say, oh, I've got a product and a service, but some, you know, you may do that, but you, I want you to think right now about the main thing that brings you in the most profit. And that's what we're going to stick to today. So you might actually find that very difficult. I'm just going to move this out of the way. You might find it very difficult to think about what your niche is. So, um, you know, who your customers are or what you're doing. So we could think about what your niche is. So what, what niche are you in? Are you in health and wellness? Are you in clothing and fashion? Are you in weight loss, marketing, tech, gaming, gardening and construction? And then niche that down even more. So if you're into health and wellness, is it keto? Is it massage? Is it bone? Is it yoga? Those are very, very, very different things. So when you're thinking about that, I really want you to be broad and then get very, very clear about this. It makes your marketing so much easier to do. Perhaps you're in clothing and fashion. So perhaps you're in, um, you know, that could be over 50s fashion, that could be teens, that could be shoes. Think about construction. Which trade is, are you in with construction? I just saw somebody raise their hand. So with, with, this type of, um, with this type of webinar, we can't actually open up the screen. So if you wanted to pop into the Q&A or the chat, um, hopefully I can answer your question in there. Okay, so getting very specific about who you are, it just makes it really easy for people to recommend you and um, to remember you. You might like to screenshot this because there's quite a lot of information in this little uh, graphic. We can think about what personality we're going to try and portray online. So if we just choose one, maybe two of these, it really does make it a lot easier for you. So thinking about the voice that you're going to portray online, are you the joker? Are you going to come up with memes? Are you going to, is it going to be funny? Is it going to be entertaining? Can you sustain that? Are you going to be the hero? Are you going to be the lover? Is, is your, um, you know, is, is your product or your service about intimacy, about care? Are you going to be the every man? You know, are, are you going to, are you, are you into lawn mowing? Are you um, into, yeah, landscaping? We've got a landscaping person here. You know, are you, are you going to share really awesome tips for me to how to restring that bloody whippersnipper that I couldn't do the other day? <laughs> um, you know, are you the ruler? Are you, uh, 
I see I see a lot of the people coming out trying to sell um, cryptocurrencies and things and and their you know control ruler I'm the best I can do this this is really good you you know follow me type situation and that's great because it does tend to work for them so just really think about um, who you are in this and have a look at the colors. So have a look at the colors in that. Those colors might actually resonate well with your branding in um, with that person, it, you know, innocent, safety, um, explore spirituality. That might, that might re really resonate with that beautiful sort of soft green color. So that, that um, little graphic there, it actually tells you quite a lot. So you, you'll probably be one mainly and probably two as well. And who are your customers? You do not sell to everyone. And the reason why we need to find out who our customers are is because we need to know how we're going to talk to our customers so that we can give them the best amount of education, the best benefits of our products. Um, we need to know where they are. We need to know how we're going to speak to them. So you do not sell to everybody. And that's great because then you don't have to spread your marketing everywhere. You only need to speak to those people that are going to buy your product or your service. So you might, again, like to screenshot this. Now, this is a really basic one. You can go into a customer, and sometimes we call this an avatar. Sometimes we call this your target market. But just think about this is your customer. This is your ideal customer. This is the one that buys from you and then buys from you again and then tells all of their friends to buy from you. There's always going to be a bell curve. There's always going to be people on either side. But these are the ones that are your absolute cheerleaders. They love you so much that they're going to post on social media that they've just bought your product. They're going to tell all their friends. They're going to buy everything that you've got for their Christmas presents. That's what you want. You want these absolute um, people that are just going to be your amazing cheerleaders. So think about that at the top, your product or your service. Now, again, this is your main one that you sell. And think about what websites they go to, because then you know if you're going to do some advertising, that's the websites that you're going to choose to do the advertising on. Do they go to Amazon? Are you going to, um, are you going to put your products on Amazon? Do they go to Facebook Marketplace? Are you going to go there? Do they go to eBay a lot? Go there. And this is, this is you asking your customers. This is you asking your target customers. You can, you can incentivize them. You can say, look, can I buy you a cup of coffee? I've just got a few questions for you. Um, you know, you could, I don't know, give them a 10% off and say, look, I just need, I just need to um, answer these questions. So again, what social media are on? And we'll go through the social medias and where our main customers might be. So which social media are they on? Are they on Instagram? Are they on Twitter? Are they on LinkedIn? There's, if your majority of people are on LinkedIn, don't spend the majority of your time making Facebook posts. It's wasting your time. It really is. And your time is precious, my friend. It is. What sort of books do they like? Can you show a post of the books that they like and you're reading them? They'll go, oh my goodness, she likes the same as me. We're the same. This is gorgeous. And, you know, that connection is made. What do they love? What do they hate? Now think about the name probably right at the end. Think about their age. The age is actually quite important because it is where they're on social media or it's if they've got expendable income for your you know, for your product, is your age, um, are you selling to grandparents who like to buy for toddlers? Um, Gender is important as well. And if, you're, if your product lends itself to that, married, kids, what ages, what location they're at. So even if you say, yeah, I sell online, I don't want to send my products to London. It's way too expensive from where I am. So I don't want customers in London. I want customers in Australia. So think about that. This is, this is your idea. Where do you want these people? 
their income? Do they work full time or part time? Um, their celebrity crushes, their guilty pleasures. Now, what worries them? Now, I'm going to show you mine. It has changed a little bit, as yours should, as the more that you get to know your customers. Um, I'm going to show you mine now. I said at the beginning, I own a skincare company and um, I did all of this and then I googled the most popular name in the age bracket for the gender that I had in the country that I wanted to sell in and it came up with Jenny. So now all I need to say, every single time I put a piece of marketing out, will Jenny find this interesting? Will Jenny find this funny? Will Jenny um, want to buy this? So this is like very, very quickly, and I want you to think about this in relation to your customers. Like I said, it's Jenny. The product is on certain skin, so Australian sensitive skin, but I did, uh, initially we were only going to be selling in, a, in the US. So that was actually my um, business plan, but shipping costs, ruined that <laughs> so i had to quickly make a, a website at the end of last year and start selling in australia so but this was my ideal customer i haven't changed it too much i needed to know that she went on amazon because that's where we were going to sell it, sell our products probably on netflix i wanted i needed to know that she was online tiktok was going to be um, and actually still is our biggest marketing platform because that was, is, still is, um, what is the most popular and Instagram. So I actually spent no time on Facebook, no time building my Facebook presence at all. Um, all I did was grow the Instagram, so, but, and then I just moved it over onto Facebook. And it was quite interesting, actually, because I grew to over 3,000 on TikTok very, very, very fast, and I was still about two on Facebook. So that's how hard it is to actually grow on Facebook at the moment as well. Now I needed to know what sort of blogs and podcasts they listen to, so I could so, sort of say to her, have you heard about the latest something or something? And then that would have engagement, that would build engagement on my page. What they love, Jenny loves her family, she loves her friends, clothes and fashion in the sea. And she hates bullies and trolls, chemicals and drugs. Now I put that there because my skincare company is all natural. So I needed to make sure that that person, you know, is aligned with those sort of ethics. And then, uh, this is the age. She's female. Doesn't matter whether she's married or not. She's got te older teenagers. She's in sunny places because specifically for sensitive skin. Um, because you know that's actually what I've got. Cancer's cut out already. That kind of thing. So uh, a sunny place so we can resonate together. Uh, probably works full time because she needs to have some expendable income. These. It's funny actually. These Jennifers came up as the most popular uh, celebrities of this age range. I went, oh, that's so funny that they're all Jennifers. Um, they do like wine, this pimple popping video, which was a bit weird. That's what actually went viral for me when I tested it on TikTok. So the only reason I could go viral is because I'd already done this. And I know then that what she's looking at. And so I went looking for that on TikTok found the most popular video, duetted it, and I've got a whole TikTok webinar if you want to have a look at that later to teach you how to do that, um, duetted it, and that's actually what went viral. So I knew that from doing this customer avatar worksheet. Um, what worries them? Getting older, parents, skin, the environment, and I'd probably put cancer in there as well. So I really just, I'm showing you this so that it's just really easy for you to see how it relates to a business and how then you can change this to relate to your business. Okay, so where are they? The next couple of screens have got a lot of information on them. I'm not going to read them. Um, I want you to just have a quick scan of it or screenshot it if you need to. 
So Facebook, like I was saying um, before, I grew on TikTok very quickly. Instagram, if you're using all the new features, um, you can grow. The Facebook is actually quite hard to grow at the moment. Every customer I speak to, I say, yes, have a Facebook page because you might want to do some advertising. But um, Facebook groups really are the place that everybody is spending their time. I do still have a Facebook page. I think it is still very important to have a presence on Facebook, but um, it's not where I'm going to be spending all of my time. But if your demographic is on Facebook, if you've got an older demographic, this does say largest age group. I would think that it would even be a, a bit bigger than that where did i get this report social spout so 2021 so it would actually be older than that i would say over 45s um but it you know your people best better than i do instagram a little bit younger than 45s um in my opinion it would be down to about 30s 25s to 30s and up to 40s, I guess. Um, but with Instagram, they really are competing with TikTok at the moment. And um, you do need to do what Instagram is asking you to do in order to grow. It's actually really easy to do, so don't get too stressed about that. I've got a Reels workshop coming up. That's what's working best at the moment. So um, jump on and I can teach you how to make Reels. They're very, very, very easy. So just thinking about where your customers are at, you might like to create reels and then move them over into Facebook just so that you've got that placement on Facebook as well. LinkedIn, if you've got more of a corporate demographic, more of a corporate target market, um, spending a decent amount of time on LinkedIn, liking, uh, commenting on people's posts, posting daily, sharing things. That's a really good way of building a business um, community. Pinterest, um, I think I'm teaching a Pinterest on Thursday. I uh, know oh blogs on Thursday, so Pinterest might be next week. So Pinterest, if, you're, if your people are predominantly female, Pinterest is a bit of a slow burn. Pinterest is for planners. So if you've got a business that um, people plan for, like it might be weddings or it might be birthdays or it might be um, what else do people plan for? Anniversaries, uh, travel, that type of thing. That yeah, Pinterest is really good for that. And Pinterest is fabulous because it actually allows you to have on every single one of your pins a uh, link going back to your website. So if you're a blogger, Pinterest is very good for you as well. TikTok, um, the TikTok information that I got the other, or not the other day, a little while ago, when I was getting some, doing some research for a TikTok webinar that I put together, um, the three most downloaded apps last year was Service New South Wales, Service Victoria, and we had to download those apps in order to, you know, show our QR codes or scan them or whatever. So they were sort of ones that we almost had to. And then the third most downloaded was TikTok in Australia. A lot of people say, oh, TikTok's only in America. It's very much here. And people say, oh, it's only for 13 year olds and you've got to dance. I've never danced and I'm not 13. <laughs> And there's a lot of people on that are my age and um, and I'm getting the most amount of sales from all of my different platforms off TikTok at the moment. So might be something that you want to look into. Snapchat, I don't know a lot about Snapchat. I've got to be completely transparent with you. My kids use it all the time. Sort of a, a messaging system and a photograph messaging system. Um, I don't know a lot of people that use Snapchat for um, business. But if you do know someone that uses Snapchat for business, get in touch with them and um, hopefully I can have a chat and then learn. YouTube, you know, it's been around for ages, forever. YouTube's great if you've got educational content that you can share with your people. Really, really good. I even use YouTube as a... Um, a storage platform for my videos 
when I wasn't working for Business Station and I was doing this for myself, I used to sell, you know, these um, webinars and tutorials and things, and I used to store them on YouTube and make it unlisted so that only the people that I gave the link to could see those. So YouTube is actually a really, really great way of, um, of using that and, and sharing your videos. So setting up to be there and setting up properly, just making that customer journey really easy for your people. So your business Facebook page has all of your information in the middle on your cover page so that it shows up beautifully on a mobile view. Most people look at your social media on mobile, so make it look good on mobile. You've got your logo, it sits inside the circle. There's so many people that I see with the words along the bottom. Um, so it sits inside the circle. You've got your um, username set up properly. You've got your call to action set up properly. Now, sometimes by default, people uh, Facebook puts the call to action as a WhatsApp. I know very few people that use WhatsApp. So if your call to action says WhatsApp and someone's trying to contact you there, then you're not going to get that message. If people are trying to message you and your message says send message and you don't know how to check your Facebook messages, you're missed out on lots of customers. Change this button to what suits you. I want people to go to my website, that goes to my website. I want, you know, if I want people to book, that will go to a booking system. So you set it up to how what is absolutely the best for you. Then fill out your description, pop in your website, and there's templates. There are different templates for Facebook pages. So if you've got a shop, change it to the shop's template. If you do events, change it to the events template. It looks better and it's easy for your customers to navigate that page. If you've got shopping, make sure that you set up your shop in Facebook Commerce Manager and it's linked to Instagram. So you can get that little shopping cart and then people can shop from your post and they can go straight to your website. Now, I want to backtrack a little bit here. If you've got a website already, try to link Facebook Commerce Manager from your website from the website, not from Facebook, do it from web, your website. Because every time then when you update your inventory on your website, you update your, your, your price, out of stock, you add another product, it will automatically update it on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, so making sure your Facebook is set up beautifully, making sure your Instagram is set up beautifully, your logo in the circle. <laughs> and it's the same as your Facebook and it's the same as your website, it's the same as your Pinterest. Have that brand consistency across absolutely everything. Set up the shop, um, the correct template. So then you've got the view shop. If you sell products, it should be a shopping template. The call to action button, view shop, following message. You've only got one place up here to have a hyperlink, a clickable link off Instagram. So set that up properly so that you have people going directly to where you want them to go to. Um, highlights down the bottom. And this is what I actually noticed today. These highlights show up differently. So I'll show you the next screen. Oh, whoops, can I? No, it's gone. Um, my highlights on my page are all of these blue. And then I actually screenshotted this from somebody else's page and they're not. So I went in there and fixed that this morning. So have a look at, have a look at your page on other people's, um, other people's devices. And then your posts are mainly reels these days because they work better than anything else. They get shown to a bigger audience um, and shopping posts, stories, variety of different things on your Instagram if that's where you're going to be focusing all of your attention. Where to find your content. So making, sh making sure your customers want to come back and see what else you've got for them. But if you're you know, a small business owner and you think, well, what do I actually say? Well, how do I find this content? 
I've got a whole entire webinar about this of where to find your content, but we're going to go through a few bits and pieces very quickly. The biggest one that I suggest you to go to is other social media or your social media. So going into your social media and going into the websites, the pages that are relevant to you, having a look at the hashtags, having a go into the search and writing in your niche into the search. And then or what I do during the week is I screenshot or I save information, um, inspiration, things that I might like to try throughout the week so that when I've got time to work on my skincare company on Saturday morning, I've got a chance to go back on and see all of that content that I have thought was going to be interesting. And then it just sparks a lot of creativity when I'm actually there. So collecting, collecting, collecting through the week, screenshots, records, videos, saves, and then going back and saying, okay, well, this is what this is what I've got. This is what I thought was going to be really good. So getting information from your competitors, getting information from the hashtags, getting information from, you know, if you're on TikTok, you might want to go on Pinterest and see what's going on on there. Uh, TikTok is the, um, I hope you don't mind me going on about TikTok, but of just this, this is what's happening at the moment. Um, TikTok is the sort of forefront at the moment. So if you're not on TikTok, you might actually like to go onto someone's platform if you don't have it already and just sort of see what's going on in your niche there. Because what you'll find is Instagram's about three or four weeks after TikTok. And so if you find out what's trending, what's going on really on TikTok at the moment, and you put that on your Instagram, that's actually going to work really well for you. So going and having a look at all the different places, answer the public. I'll, I will go into this very quickly for you. So answer the public is, um, is what everybody is searching for on Google. So if we were in here and if we were just to put in um, my products are for sensitive skin. If we were to put in that search, so you'd put in your niche or you would put in your keywords you can change the um, place that it's at. Search, you get two free searches a day. After that, you do need to pay. And then I'm just gonna scroll down so your eyes are okay. 382 searches. This is what people are searching for on Google. Okay, so um, can sensitive skin um, users, I guess, use um, chemical sunscreen? So you can go in, you can make a blog on that, you can make a post on that, you can make a story on that, you can make a question and answer on that, um, you can make a video on that. So this is what people are searching for. So you know already what is in your customer's mind and what they're asking. So this makes you out to be the absolute expert in your field. If you don't know the answer to it, let me have a look. You can actually click on it and it does go to the Google answer. And you could possibly have a look at that and you can see how you could, yeah, like I said, make a blog or make a, um, a Canva template answering that question. If you're going to copy this straight away, word for word, you need to tell the source of where it has come from. You can't say that this is yours as plagiarism. So if you're going to use this, just copy the little URL down the bottom and say, this is where I found this information. Alrighty. I know none of you would do that. <laughs> none of you would plagiarize. Okay, how to make content. So that just there's a couple of really easy ways of making content and I haven't actually written it there. The easiest way of making content is getting your iPhone out and talking to it. <laughs> That's it. That's your easiest way of making content. Put your face in front of the camera and talk to your customers. Make a 10 to 15 second video and post it. It's the easiest way to make your content. You know your business better than anybody else. You know, with that landscaping, if you've got a before and after video, oh my goodness, gold. 
another way of doing it is to repurpose other people's content. So on Instagram, you can use a repost app. And the way that that happens is that it acknowledges the person that you've reposted that with. On some Instagram apps, you can tap the professional dash dashboard and then you can see how other businesses connect with other people and you can just get inspired. This just shows you what your competitors are doing in your industry and get inspired of what they're doing. You could message people or tag them to share their post. So if you are sharing their post and it doesn't have the little tag of them, you write the tag in there so that you can, you know, you're acknowledging that you didn't make it up and you're actually sharing that post. Some people do like you to message them first before you share their post. You can share videos straight from Facebook. You can share from other platforms. So have a look at Pinterest, you know, if you, if you want to. You can screenshot tweaks, tweets and share them. Um, and again, acknowledging the source, uh, looking at your own content in your analytics and see what we've done well. And you can share that again. Uh, have a branded hashtag and ask the customers to tag you. And then you can use this content if appropriate. Someone sent me a product the other day and they just said, you know, can you, can you just, um, can you just do a little video for me? And I'm like, yeah, sure. No worries. So, you know, did a couple of videos for them, a couple of little reels for them um, because they're launching 1st of August, she said. Um, so they've got content to use with other people using their uh, product. So very easy. You can do that through doing what she did and just asking um, and, and gifting the product, or you can do that through influencers or brand ambassadors um, or your friends and family. <laughs> okay, scheduling your content. So like I was saying before, I get all of my information, I get all my inspiration during the week. I get the trending sounds, I get the trending hashtags, I get the trending trends <laughs> on TikTok, and then I create all of it on the weekend. And so then I've got a whole bunch of content and then I can either schedule it in Facebook and Instagram if I'm doing it there. And so you schedule it in business suite, Facebook business suite, and it goes over onto Instagram, making sure that you only put the hashtags on Instagram and you don't put them on Facebook. It doesn't look great. And you can use business suite or publishing tools or creator studio to do that. Um, and there's a few places that don't schedule yet that don't automatically schedule yet. TikTok doesn't automatically schedule and Instagram at the moment doesn't automatically schedule. So what I do is I create the content and I stick it in drafts. Every morning when I wake up, I do my meditation and then I flick out a social media post from my draft. So because I, I do that because that's when other people are online. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to create anything it's sitting in the draft and I can send that out every single day. You can also use scheduling tools like Later or Sendable or Buffer or Hootsuite. There's quite a few of them that you can use. Um, so batching, batching content for our busy, you know, busy small business owners is it just it saves your sanity because I speak to so many people that don't batch their content and don't schedule their content. And I know they get to the end of the day and they get so grumpy with themselves that they haven't done anything and they know they should have done something. And then it's just this whole guilt thing that's going on in your brain. And that's just horrible. So if you can batch that out, if you can batch at least three and then schedule those out throughout, throughout the week, it's fantastic. And that's actually why if you do look at my social media that you'll see that I'm often wearing the same thing <laughs> because, you know, the posts just go out, go out, but it doesn't matter. It's all good. Okay, now we've got a question. So, um, Elena, hopefully I've said that wrong. Where's the best time to post? Um, an example of when most people are online. So go into your social medias and go into the insights and go into um, the analytics and see when your people are online. 
I do that regularly because I feel it might change. And I did it this morning. So it was a very relevant question. I did that this morning and I found out that most of my people are online at five or six in the morning. And so that's when I'm going to be doing mine. Um, it, it really, really depends on your target market, your, your customer. And that's why right at the beginning, we needed to find out who our customer was because we need to find out, are they night owls? Are they FIFO workers? Um, when are they going to be online? So just really think about your customer and also where are they? So that demographic, that timeline that I was just telling you about, that's only for TikTok. And so that's a different time zone for them, but it's my five or six in the morning. So that's when I'm trying to get the content out to them. So it's you going back and you think to yourself, or well, do they sit down and have a nap and a bit of a social scroll at, um, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon? Do they have a lunch break? Are they travelling to work on the train and they are spending their time on social media then? Um, do they sit down um, or do they work full time? And that's, again, why that customer thing had full time on it. Do they work full time and they're not allowed to open social media during the day? And do they, you know, come home, cook dinner, put their feet up and at about 8, 8.30, and that's when they're on social media. So that's when you would be posting. So it's just, it's all about knowing your customer and, and really thinking about when they are on social media, trialing that, and then going back into your content and your analytics and seeing if that is, that is correct, if that is right. Now, the other thing that happens on Facebook uh, Business Suite is it tells you the optimal time. So if you click schedule, it'll actually tell you the optimal time that Facebook thinks your people are online. I want you to take that with a bit of grain of salt. Facebook does know a fair bit about your customers, but you know your customers better than they do. So you can use that um, optimal time, mine's six o'clock for some reason, um, in the evening for uh, Sydney or yeah for Sydney and um, so I'm busy at six o'clock I'm cooking dinner and so I schedule all of my posts out for the Australian market at six o'clock in the afternoon in the evening okay so it's just really it's it's finding out um, when your people are online repurposing your content you don't need to reinvent the wheel every single time you can go back into your content that you've already made and you can see what worked very, very well and try and use that. You can repurpose your content from different platforms. I take the TikTok logo off uh, using SnapTick and download that into my Instagram Reels. So I don't create two different types of things. I, I create one and then I repurpose that. That then also goes over into Pinterest and it could possibly go into Facebook um, stories and Instagram stories as well. And it sometimes also goes into Google My Business. So repurposing content, please make sure you're sharing your testimonials and your reviews. So if you've got Google reviews, you can screenshot those or you can copy and paste them and make a graphic in Canva. Uh, video posts uh, work better than anything else. If you can get someone to do a testimonial, that's amazing. You can cut up snippets of your blogs and you can repurpose those into 5, 10, 15 social media posts or videos. Uh, look at, like I said before, look at old content and see what works and rehash it. You can cut up longer videos into shorter ones. You can make an ebook into, uh, like you can cut up the, that ebook and you can make it into short audio or videos or a podcast, social media snippets, an email series perhaps. So just having a look and see the things that you have actually already created. You can make an infographic, put it on Pinterest. You can cut that up into social media, make a video, make a reel. And then, like I said, you can put that into stories and TikTok and Pinterest and resize it into YouTube shorts. Well, there's a lot, I said right at the beginning, there's a lot of stuff in here. Just take little step by little step by little step. Don't have to do this all in one day. Analyzing your content, seeing what works and what didn't, and then repeat what works. It's actually sometimes very surprising about what works. So this is your Facebook, go into your insights. This is your Instagram, go into your insights here. 
and it does the same on TikTok. You can go into the insights um, there as well. Uh, pretty sure you can go into them on just about every platform, actually. Okay, so we've covered a lot. We've covered a lot today. How are we going for time? Good. Um, nine steps to social media. So we've covered a lot. So who are you? Easy, easy, easy to promote yourself if you're very clear about who are you, what's your business, and what product you are selling. Um, who are your customers? So who are they? Who Are, are they Jenny? Are they Mick? Are they Deirdre? <laughs> Um, a customer the other day had, was so clear about her customer avatar. It made it so easy because all, all we did, she told me about Helen and then she painted a beautiful picture in my mind of who Helen was. And so everything that we talked about helping her with her social media and where she should be, we just talked about Helen. I just kept saying, I, I reckon Helen might be here. So maybe you could try this. I reckon Helen might be there. It was so easy then to figure out where she needs to be. So who are your customers um, and what, what are they? Uh, where are they? <laughs> what are they? Well, they might be dogs. There you go. <laughs> but the dog owners are your customers. Um, so where are they? Don't spend a lot of your time on a platform that, uh, and you're just wasting your time being on. Um, if your customers aren't there and then set up there properly make sure it's really easy for your customers to get to you find that content go into google so do the search go into the other platforms um, have go into out to the public uh, have a look around seeing what the competitors are doing if you wanted to see the ads that your competitors are doing you can go into their facebook pages and then go onto the left hand side and it says transparency and then click on transparency and you can actually see the ads that they are running. Now, if you go into a very, very, very large competitor that you have um, and you know that that company has been going for a long time, they've got a huge marketing budget behind them, they've got a whole entire marketing team, you know if they're going to be spending those money on Facebook ads, you know those Facebook ads are worth it. They're, you know, they're, they're good. They're good to get some inspiration from. Um, the other day I was sitting at the hairdresser and I was just flicking through a magazine and um, I found an article that would be really, really good for Jenny, for my customer. Um, so I thought, great, I can make a blog post on that. That would be really cool to do. So you find your content all over the place. If, you, if you've got a very clear understanding of your customer, you'll be walking around the news agency and you'll you'll see a headline and you'll say, oh, my, my, my journey might be interested in that. I'm going to make a blog post on that or I'm going to make a social media video on that. So if you've just, you're just going back and making it really, really clear about what you're doing, making the content, Canva's your best friend when you're making content and your smartphone, get your video out, take some video. Um, scheduling content, save your mental health and actually batch your content and schedule that out. Repurpose what works and then analyze it. Don't do again what doesn't work, wasting your time. It's very precious. And then um, doing more of what does actually work. If you haven't joined up to this program already, we are here because of Business Station. So luckily you get these um, webinars free for you to have a look at. Um, but if you do want me to have a chat with you one-on-one, -on -one, you get three hours and it's three separate hours. It's not three hours all in one, but three separate hours. We get to have a chat about your business, what, what you've done, what you want help with, where we can move you forwards. Um, if I can't help you, we've got a team behind us that uh, specialise in different things. So you might have guessed already, I specialise in social media, um, e-commerce and Canva. So if you need any help with that, great. And you get seven hours. So three hours of one-on-one -on -one and then um, four hours of workshops and webinars. And it's only $44. It really is such a bargain. Um, if you do want to jump on board to that, you have to have an ABN in WA Queensland or Northern Territory. Um, we do have facilities for people who are running a non-for-profit in Queensland, but nowhere else yet. 
So your business does need to be registered as a for-profit business and you need to have fewer than 20 full-time staff members. If you wanted to jump on board to that, it's businessstation.link forward slash register and you'll see there that it says preferred advisor. If you wanted to have a chat with me, pop my name in Victoria Ewan but if you wanted to go through all of the other advisors and see who is going to best suit your business I really encourage you to do that. Okie dokes um, okay so um, are you based in New South Wales Victoria for this program so if you're based in New South Wales and Victoria the government do have programs for you that you can jump on board so this is a gov government initiative a federal government initiative and New South Wales um, New South Welshmen and Welsh ladies get a chance to um, go into the government programs there and the Victorian programs there as well Okay, Dokes, so I'm just going to stop sharing. Does anyone else have any questions or would like to say anything? Just say hi. <laughs> We've got a few. Oh, I've got about five more minutes. So if anyone wanted to jump on board, I know I really, I really have covered a lot, um, but I really hope that um, you've got a little bit of information that you can start with and then just build and just build and just build it's, it's going to be okay so um thank you Britt. i'm glad you found it awesome that's great um thanks vince really really i'm glad you found that good and what was the name of the program that you removed the tiktok logo great question it's snap tick so s-n-a-p-t-i-k and um you download it there's a whole bunch of annoying ads so don't worry about that it's a free program everyone puts ads on that so you what you do is you go into TikTok you go um, you click on the three little dots at the bottom of your video you copy the link you paste that URL into Snaptic and then um, it takes a while you have to click on over the ads download that it downloads to your phone to your it doesn't download to your camera roll though this took me ages to find out it doesn't download to your camera roll it downloads to your files so click on the download and then download it to your camera roll and then you can put it wherever you like then you put it on like I said I put it on reels I put it on Pinterest you can put it on YouTube shorts now the reason we do that is because Instagram has come out and said that it does not want content that has other people's logos on it. I see logos on it on on video on reels all of the time still though. Um, but I want to teach you best practice. I want to teach you the best way to do that. So that is currently uh, what we do. Okay, so I hope you. So that's snap tick. That was a very long winded answer. <laughs> No problem. That's all good. Okay. So if you wanted to email me, if you've got any questions, um, victoria at businessstation.com.au. And I hope you have an amazing day. I hope that you got a little bit of information out of that, that you can build on. Um, Blinda, good to have you here. I'm glad you enjoy these webinars. And um, I, I really do hope you can build a beautiful, beautiful life around your business and, and get that satisfaction of, about growing something new and wonderful for this amazing world that we live in. Okay, have a wonderful, wonderful day. See ya.